Hi everybody, Richard Strowman's here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product demo. Uh, this one is very interesting. It's a generative AI uh, product, which we have actually featured in Artificial Lawyer already. It's called Spellbook by Rally. To tell us more about it is Scott Stevenson. Hi, Scott. Hey, Richard. Thanks for having us. Ah, it's a pleasure. So just before we get into the product, uh, just tell us a bit about yourself and your company. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm uh, Scott. I'm co-founder and CEO of Rally. Uh, we've been around as a legal tech company for uh, four and a half, five years now. Um, we've had a, a document automation and collaboration platform for a while, and we just launched a Spellbook uh, in September. And it is a, uh, I guess, a generative AI tool for contract drafting that can help you um, automatically draft legal language or autocomplete legal language and also help you uh, review uh, contracts as well. Fantastic. And I think you're also going to show us the new uh, chatbot function. Is that right? Yes, we are going to show you a new chatbot functionality that no one has uh, seen before uh, yet. Um, we haven't launched this to all of our uh, users yet. Um, but yeah, super excited to show it. All right. I'm going to disappear and I will come back briefly at the end for a couple of questions. But please uh, take it away. All right. Here we go. Um, so I'm just going to hop into Word. Uh, the first thing to note about Spellbook is it is a Word add-in. We only support Word today, although we've had some requests to support other document software as well. Um, I'm going to show you a few different functions uh, with it. Um, you can see that Spellbook has a bunch of different functions, including draft on the side here. Draft is kind of one of the main ones. Um, we call these spells, and you cast these spells to kind of manipulate the document or to get data out of it. Um, in this example document, we have a very standard uh, SaaS service uh, order form and a SaaS service agreement. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with Spellbook. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you uh, the generation or autocomplete of legalese. So um, the way to think of, we use GPT-3 in the back end, and the way to think of GPT-3 and this kind of generative uh, AI is that it's kind of like an incredibly power, powerful autocomplete. Um, so you can think of autocomplete on your phone. It's like that times 100 uh, for legal text. And uh, Spellbook has seen you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of contracts before. And so basically, it's going to look at um, the context of this entire uh, contract um, and any hints that you give it to fill in the blanks. Um, so here we've added a heading, uh, return and destruction of customer data. We've also added a little note here um, saying that we actually want four sections to be drafted, one around return and destruction of customer data, uh, one around encryption of data, and one around uh, the notification of unauthorized access. Um, so we have a hint here, we have a heading, and we're going to hit cast. And something to note is that Spellbook is kind of uh, creative. Um, so every time you run it, you're going to get different results. Um, and in this case, uh, it didn't actually give us too much. It gave us the headings that we asked for, but not much else. So I'm going to rerun it. Um, and that is kind of the cost, uh, I guess, cost and benefit of um, uh, working with this kind of AI. Um, it is fuzzier. It is more human-like. Um, so that means it's sometimes going to be less deterministic. Um, but its results can be much more uh, human and, uh, you know, verge towards something like artificial general intelligence. So this time we ran it a second time and you can see we have um, the three, it understood what we were looking for and we have uh, the three sections that we uh, we wanted. And the third section, it got cut off a little bit here. We'll only draft so much text at once. Um, so I can actually hit cast again to get more text or I can actually just type plus 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 as a shortcut um, and that will cause it to uh, do the draft again. And there we have it. We have our three uh, different sections there. Um, again, it's creative. Um, it's seen, uh, you know, lots of different examples. And, um, oh, I ran, accidentally ran it again. Um, it's uh, seen lots of different examples. And, um, yeah, it's going to draft in different styles, different levels of aggressiveness. Um, and you can try to put guardrails on it and give it hints of what you're looking for. So up here, I could have said, you know, I want an aggressive clause or I want a clause that or a section that favors the customer um, and all those sorts of things. Um, any questions so far, Richard, or should I keep on going? No, that's great though. Just you keep on going. I'll, I'll ask a couple at the end. All right, great. Um, so that's draft mode. Um, yeah, a few other interesting things you can do with draft mode are things like um, 
Yeah, just adding a section number. So here under the term and termination section, I can actually just type 5.3 and Spellbook will try to determine what's something likely that could come next um, under term and termination. Um, so I've just typed 5.3. I put no guardrails on this whatsoever. So it's kind of drawing from the ether what could uh, come next. Um, and you can run it multiple times, get different ideas, different angles. Um, so in this case, um, it came up with um, an effects of termination uh, section here. Um, and it also inserted a limitation of liability because it looked at the rest of the contract and it said there's no limitation of liability here. Um, normally it would be here. Um, or it's something that is highly likely you might want to include. So it inserted that as well. So that's kind of running it without guardrails uh, to get ideas on uh, yeah, what you might, uh, you might want uh, in your contract. Um, one way we often put it to our users is that uh, Spellbook is kind of like a muse. Um, so it can give you ideas uh, from the ether, um, from all the contracts it's seen in your contract. Um, and uh, yeah, another way we put it is it gives you marvel to curve uh, where you didn't have any before. And uh, our friend Brian Giuliano first said that to me and it really resonated. Um, so it's not always going to be perfect, but it's going to give you marvel to curve uh, very reliably. I'll show a few other uh, modes here as well. So you can see here, we actually draft mode is one that actually writes to the document. And then we have a whole bunch of different modes that uh, lawyers and paralegals can use to um, review documents. And the other thing I'll mention is we only release this for lawyers and paralegals, legal professionals. Um, we do not enable non-legal professionals to use this. So this is to be used um, by a legal professional um, to help you help your clients a little more efficiently. Actually, could you, yeah. could you yeah. actually, well, after this next one, could you do that? Explain to a five-year-old. I'd like to see yeah. that. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll do that one uh, first. So explain to a five-year-old is basically going to uh, look at this whole contract and uh, try to explain it to in, in five-year-old language. And so I'll run it. Um, this contract is an agreement between two people. One person is providing a service. The other one is paying for that service. The contract says that the person providing the service will do their best to provide uh, the service in a way that minimizes errors and interruptions and so on and so on. So pretty good, pretty good. Um, it's referring to the companies as people there. So uh, not Well, that's, not that, perfect, that's actually but... really, really interesting. And also very important for, there's a big, well, there's a growing movement in the UK at the moment around clear language and contracts. Right. Um, yeah. It's very interesting, but but, but look, keep going. Uh, show us sure. more. Yep. Um, yeah, the other one you can do is explain sections. So this one's really cool. And I can actually highlight um, a section of uh, this contract and explain just that section um, in clearer language, kind of like explain to a five-year-old. Um, yeah, so some more <laughs> explanation of uh, what is going on in this contract. Um, Next thing I'll do is missing clauses. So this one will look at uh, the document and yeah, try to bubble up what might be missing from the contract based on things it's seen before. And uh, yeah, it came up with a few things. Um, so indemnification, limitation of liability, confidentiality, termination payment. These sections are here to some extent, but it may not have been satisfied with them. Um, so you can run it again to kind of get some additional ideas um, on what it might be looking for. Um, again, it's not seeing an indemnification section, not seeing limitation of liability. Um, there is there is a warranty and disclaimer section, but again, it may not be uh, happy with it or it may not think that it includes um, what it might be looking for. So you can do things like the trick where you add that extra section number or uh, try to draft further to see what it might be um, looking for. And um, yeah, again, you can, uh, you can keep running it um, keep getting different ideas, and it can kind of act as um, a safety net um, and give you other ideas of what you might be missing. Wow, that's um, really, really quite extraordinary. Uh, I, I want to stick with this, but I also want to see the new chatbot. Uh, sure. So let's, I think, uh, have you covered most of the key points there, or do you think, are we missing anything really massive we should add? Yeah, I think I covered most of it. Um, okay. I think there's just one uh, one mode uh, I'll show you next, which is, um, yeah, I think uh, review email format. So this one will attempt to do kind of like an email format review to kind of uh, short shortcut a lawyer's work um, to uh, 
almost do like if, if a client sent you a contract and said, hey, can you review this for me? Is there anything I should be worried about? It's not going to do a perfect job. It's not going to replace you whatsoever. Um, but you can see that, um, yeah, it, it, it can have some interesting takes um, that can help you um, get down to the client's level, understand what they might not understand and uh, explain to them things that um, they might need to know. So, uh, you know, it'll say there are a few things in this contract that could be prob problematic. For example, a section on payment of fees could be clear, uh, not clearly how customers will be invoiced. Um, there's also mention of a finance charge for late payments. Um, but it did also ultimately conclude that this contract uh, does also seem pretty favorable um, for the company. Um, yeah, I'll show you the new chatbot mode unless you had any other questions. Uh, no, no. Or... Well, I've got a hundred questions, but we will not. We won't, we'll, <laughs> let, we'll have to do another session, I think. But let, let's go straight sure. on to chatbot. Sure, sounds good. All right, so I'm just going to switch it on. And one second here. Okay, so I'm just switching on our new uh, chatbot mode, um, which is uh, in beta. And this uh, gives you access to a lot of the same things that I just showed, um, but in kind of a much more um, yeah, language-based interface. Um, so I can ask basic questions like, what is this contract about? Um, and... Uh, uh, it says this contract is for the provision of services by Infinite Software to the customer. Acme Motors includes terms for payments of fees, confidentiality, and warranty disclaimers. I could ask another question like, um, is there anything in this contract uh, Acme Motors uh, should be concerned about? Uh, there are a few things in the contract that Acme Motors should be aware of. First, there's a one-time implementation fee of $500. Additionally, the contract states that an infinite software will provide reasonable uh, technical services, but does not guarantee any specific level of service. Uh, finally, the contract includes confidentiality provisions and intellectual property ownership clauses that Acme Motors should review uh, carefully. Um, and then you could even ask a follow-up question like, um, what should Acme Motors uh, know about uh, the intellectual property uh, clauses. And again, you can kind of ask uh, follow-up questions and things like that. And again, this is not meant to be perfect. Um, this is not meant to replace a legal professional whatsoever, um, but it can uh, very much help you uh, get a second set of eyes on the contract, kind of have a, uh, a safety net um, that can help you capture issues that you know if you're tired you have a long contract and you need a little bit of help um spell can help you with that um yeah so yeah we just ask a, a follow-up question there um yeah uh and there we go and then we also have this new uh scribe mode we're working on where um you could actually give it drafting instructions so i could type on the side here hey you know draft a clause that says this uh, or so on uh, i can't show that one quite yet but it's coming soon Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. I mean, even, even as a general guide to help a lawyer get through a review uh, or, a, or even drafting from scratch, that's pretty impressive. Um, I know we, we talked about this uh, in, in the previous story in our special lawyer, but just, just for people who are listening now, uh, just let's not get into the technical stuff too much because we don't have time, but just very briefly, um, where is this text coming from and how do you know that it's going to have some relevance to this document? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Um, so there's really uh, two phases, of two, two parts of where this text comes from. Um, we use GPT-3 as our core large language model. And so GPT-3 has a basic, has basically ingested a ton of the internet, uh, something like 20% or more of the internet, um, tons of public, publicly available contracts on databases like Edgar. Um, it has, um, yeah, ingested nonfiction books, uh, which relate to law. Um, so it has a very general understanding of, you know, in a, I guess, an artificial intelligence kind of way, uh, many uh, different things. Um, and then additionally, we have our own uh, repository of contracts, which we've drawn from public sources and our own legal team. Uh, we do not use any customer data or customer contracts to train our AI um, because we know lawyers are super sensitive about that. So we have our own um, repository. And um, with a combination of those two things, um, 
yeah, this technology is trying to pull up the most relevant examples. And it's also, it's very contextual based. So it's always looking at what's in this contract, what kind of contract is this? Um, if, if there's a mention of the jurisdiction in the contract, it's going to notice that. Um, so it's always looking at all, for all these contextual hints uh, automatically, just like, just like a, a human would almost um, to determine you know, what text to suggest. Interesting. Two quick questions. Um, if you wanted to go the other way, and let's say you're a very large law firm or a very large corporate, particularly a large corporate where I guess you may have some homogeneity to some of the contracts because you're producing your own paper. And even if you're getting third party paper, it's always for the same stuff, you know, to to procure parts for the manufacture of a mobile law, uh, mobile phone, for example. Um, yeah. Could you just say, look, okay, we love your GPT-3 and how you've trained it. Here's 25,000 documents of our own. We don't mind if you feed it in because we've anonymized them now. And could you just right. stick those in and improve the outputs? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and would this be improving it just for that one user or for all users? Or I guess how, just how for that one user. So yeah. they'd have a special yeah, deal. Yeah, just that you. one user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is actually, I would say, one of the key questions of this technology. And... Uh, as we've been running the early adopter program, I would say we get this question 30% of the time. Um, can I train this on my own documents, on my own drafting style, on our playbooks? Um, and you can't yet, um, but that is uh, really, I would say, the uh, one of the big things that we're aiming towards uh, in our roadmap is being able to ingest your own documents and train the system based on your own playbook, your own drafting style, drawing from your own clause libraries um, and so on. So that is where we're getting. It is uh, definitely going to take a lot of work for us to get there and to make it, you know, cost effective um, as well. Um, but I think super valuable for our customers. Fantastic. Uh, just last two quick questions. Uh, <laughs> running out of time, says, it's, but it's a hard one to answer, unfortunately. Um, if you compared this to a normal natural language processing doc review tool where you could ask natural language questions like, you know, is this change of control clause normal or something along those lines? Uh, how does what you're doing using GPT-3 compare to a standard NLP model? Yeah, great question. I think the biggest difference um, with Spellbook is that uh, we're much closer to something like artificial general intelligence. So I think a lot of previous models have been very much trained on very specific um, types of use cases and very specific uh, domains of text. Um, whereas Spellbook really has knowledge of a lot of different things it can draw from. For instance, I ran a, an employment agreement through it the other day to do a review of an employment agreement. And it was for a Toronto based uh, software developer. And it came up and it said, you know, this salary seems a little low uh, for a software developer in Toronto based on what I know from glass, glassdoor.com. Um, so that type of general knowledge, I think, is really what makes this feel totally different. And there are some drawbacks. It's not, it's not all better in some cases. So for some of those really routine regimented things like fixing formatting, like there's tools that will automatically fix formatting for you. I don't know if Spellbook is the tool for that because that's a very kind of algorithmic, very um, precise task. Um, whereas Spellbook is a lot more, it's a, it's a lot more human-like. So it's a lot better at certain things and it's going to be fuzzier when it comes to, you know, certain things as well. Wow, Scott. Well, look, we could just keep going forever. And I think we should probably do a second <laughs> one to get into even more detail, but we'll leave it there for now. I just want to say thank you very much. I hope the audience enjoys that. And uh, please keep us posted. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for having us. It's great.